So, there's actually two types of main sword effects in gaming. The most popular one is the blade trail, which is essentially a stretching ribbon particle that follows the sword exactly. The second type is a blade disc, which doesn't actually follow the sword at all, but it instead creates a moving slash material that rotates in a perfect circle. The classic example of these two differences would be the sword characters in Smash Bros. For example, Marth and Roy's main moves use a blade trail, which perfectly follows the blade animation. However, their side B uses blade discs, which you can see are separate meshes that are not controlled with the blade. Now blade discs actually have a few benefits, the most important one being the aesthetic shape of the swing is always a perfect circle, because when you are using a blade trail, the shape of the slash is completely dependent on the animation itself. So if your animation is not perfectly smooth, you will get some awkward bends in the slash. Now today I'm going to teach you about blade discs. So to start you will need a disc object. Now you can make this however you want, an easy way is just to take a cylinder, split it in half and expand the middle. I personally like to have a bit more of a soft round shape, but the important part is that the UVs just go from one side to the other nice and neat, following horizontally. You'll also need a Voronoi texture, which you can make procedurally in Blender pretty easily, but if you don't want to make your own, I will leave a link to my mesh and texture in the pinned comment. Okay, now in Unreal, import your disk mesh and texture inside. Originally I was going to show you step by step exactly what nodes to use in order to make this material, but because it's kind of complicated, I figured it would actually be much easier and more useful for you if I just gave you the material and then explained how it works in this video. So in the pinned comment, along with my disk mesh and my disk texture, you will also be able to download this material. Keep in mind you will need Unreal 5.4 to open it though. So let's break this material down and show you how it works. This first part is just the slash mask, which is made of the Voronoi texture. These parameters here just do basic horizontal and vertical movement, and then control the X and Y tiling. When you apply this to an actual disk mesh, then it will look like this instead. And when you change these parameters, you'll start to see how it affects the shape of the design. And this dissolve parameter just controls how weak and faded the effects become. Now this second part just limits the area of the Voronoi. We only want the material to show up in the middle of the mesh, so that's what the sphere node is for. These parameters essentially just let us control the size, width, height, and sharpness of the sphere. So when you see it on the real mesh, it looks like this. And then when you add the Voronoi on top of the sphere mask, you'll start to see how it all comes together. Now this last part at the top is completely optional, but I personally added it because I think the slash looks better when the edge is specifically highlighted. All this part does is create a focused, compressed, smaller sphere on top of the normal one to highlight the outside of it. It's a little hard to see in this example, but if we go over here, you'll be able to see the edge is this lighter area on the outside. And when you change the parameters here, you can actually control the size and shape of it. So that's what these parts control, the Voronoi design, the sphere mask, and the edge highlight and each of these are controlled with parameters, but when you wanna use a Niagara particle, we have to convert these parameters to dynamic parameters. Now, one dynamic parameter node can hold up to four values, and because we have 12 values, we need three dynamic parameters. So that's the material, but the next step is to actually add it to a Niagara particle. So to create the particle, right click, new Niagara particle, empty, name it, open it, add an empty emitter, and update at a spawn burst instantaneous, delete the sprite renderer and add a mesh renderer instead, set it to your disk object, enable override material, and set it to the material we just created. Under initialize, set it to something like 0.35. You can change the color to whatever you want here. And under mesh attribute, we want this to be uniform and the size will be controlled here. Now to make it rotate under particle spawn, an initial mesh orientation, set mode to none, and then check the rotation. I want mine to be horizontal, so I'm gonna set it like this. And now to make it actually rotate, we have to add a mesh rotation force. Fix the issue, and now here, right click the arrow, make a vector, and right click, this will give us a curve. Select both points and right click to make them smooth. Then under scale, this controls the force of the rotation and that gives us something like this. If you add dynamic parameters, once you make sure they're checked, you'll be able to control all of the material stuff from here. And all of these can be controlled with curves. So for example, let's say you wanted the width to be small in the beginning, but big in the middle, and then get small again towards the end. Well, if we right click and add a curve, now we can control these values throughout the timeline to set them exactly to what we want. Now, keep in mind, you'll have to mess with the values ahead of time to see what they should be. A lot of them don't really start at zero or end at one. For example, the width has to go all the way down to negative 20 if you want it to disappear completely. So keep that in mind when you are making these curves. But something cool that you can do once you've got to 
to this point is just duplicate the layer, change the color, change the speed, change the parameters to get some nice cool combinations of different disks until you're happy. Once the particle is done, all you have to do is add the particle to your animation montage to get the benefits. If you don't know how to do that, I've got a tutorial for you in the pinned comment. But regardless, hope that helps. And as always, hope you have a fantastic day and I'll see you around.